Hey guys, Sean here. So today I'm going to be backlighting a Game Boy Pocket. I recently did a DMG, so uh, I figured it was time to finally do a pocket. Um, I already took the screws and power switch out. So this is what it looks like before. Not very bright at all, because there's no backlight. So first things first, you want to open it up and, you know, six tri-wing screws on the inside there's the three Phillips, just like a Game Boy Color, even pretty similar to the Game Boy Advance. And then up here you want to undo the ribbon, there's two little locks, oops this one's actually broken it looks like, but that's okay. And you can see the whole little thing just comes right out. But that doesn't usually happen. And then take out your motherboard, and the main part we're going to be dealing with right now is the screen, but we're going to come back to the motherboard later. Um, so I'll just go ahead and take these out for now. Okay, and now for pocket screens, it's kind of similar to Game Boy Colors. Pockets have given me more trouble than any other console. They're just extremely small and delicate, compared, especially compared to DMGs. I know other people have trouble with DMGs, but the ones that give me trouble are pockets. So you want to get something under here, because there's some adhesive. Just like that. Okay. So now we're going to set this aside for now. And when you hold a pocket screen, you never want to touch this ribbon. Get a little closer here so you can see. So, this is where all the data for the entire screen goes through here and here, but especially this part, this ribbon here, is the most fragile. So, just take absolute extra care of how you handle this. Think about every time you're going to flip it over, you know, don't grab it suddenly, grab it this way. You know, you always want to grab it from the glass. Don't worry about fingerprints, like, fingerprints are much more easy or much easier to clean than, than damaging this ribbon. Once you damage the ribbon it's it's done for. Um, now Ben Van is going to be releasing a a new screen for pockets. So backlighting them this old fashioned way is gonna soon be the old fashioned way. Um, but this is still a pretty valid way to backlight a pocket for now. So first, I just like to remove the little pads. Um, there's usually some little bit of tape here, so just gently like, lift on this ribbon, slide your X-Acto knife right under that tape. Being very careful not to cut this ribbon, of course. Just like that. So now this should lift up. And we're going to be doing kind of what we did with the DMG. And that is using chip quick to actually separate the two layers of the of the ribbon. So first up is uh, your chip quick flux. So you want to get that all over the so ribbon connector part down here. Might be enough, but just in case, here's the, there's another piece. Um, I always like to use tweezers. And just kind of spread it out a little bit, melt it into the metal. Alright, and now I'm just going to lay this on here. And maybe just a little bit more. Well, I'll just use all of that for now. Okay, so I'm lifting it up this, from this side where the glass is, and just running this over. Back and forth a little bit. And sometimes it falls open right away, other times 
See this time it seems to be requiring a little bit extra. So I'm just using a little spudger here to get in between the two pieces. Kind of like that. Giving it a little pressure while it opens. Just like that, and it just pops open. And now it's best to just kind of hold it while it kind of well, the chip quake hardens. It takes a little bit longer than normal solder, of course. But just like that, we can open it up. And now we have full access to the part that we need to remove here. So, of course, we're going to need to clean up all of this flux. So, you want to get some isopropyl alcohol. I have some 99% here, but even like your normal drugstore 70% or whatever should be fine. It just takes a little longer to dry. Uh, okay, so on the front here, we're also going to need to remove the chip quick that's there, but I'm going to do that in a minute. Be generous with the alcohol. It's just that this flux is so corrosive and gross and sticky and gets everywhere. And I really want to clean that up more than anything else first. I hate when it gets all over everything. Alright, that's pretty good for now. Okay, so now next step is... So now next step is to remove the reflective film and polarizing film from the back. There's two layers on the back. If you get something like a sharp metal spudger like this, or if you're careful with like your razor blade, X-Acto knife. Um, and remember, don't put any pressure on the ribbon here. If you're holding it, make sure there's like a gap, you know? Um, but you want to get right under this corner and just press right in here and I can see that it is lifting up just one layer so I'm gonna go in here with my exacto and there's the second layer so let me get it nice and close so this is the first layer here the reflective film so that one's, that one's easier, it's thinner, it comes right off. And then there's a second layer here. If you get right under the corner, you don't want to go too far with this because you risk either scratching the glass or leaving a lot of residue. So you just want it to barely lift up that corner. I'm going to switch back to the spudger here because it's a little more delicate. So there, I'm getting right under the the polarizing film. So, so there's the two layers. And ideally you want to peel them back at the same time. And that will, that will make sure to leave the least amount of adhesive residue behind. Okay, so remember be careful with your ribbon. That is the most important thing. Just constantly tell yourself, be careful with that ribbon, careful with that ribbon. Um, if it's a little tough, this one's a little tough, so I'm going to lay it all the way down on this nice flat surface here. A little piece of solder. Okay, so open this up. And just peel back. And there's going to, it looks like there's a little bit of, tiny bit of residue here and there, but not too bad. And just peel away. Okay, just like that. So there's a little bit of residue here and there. So you can use this to kind of like go back in there and try and see if you can, you can get some. 
doesn't always work. So the next step, I really like this stuff, Goo Gone. And this is basically just like an orange oil that's not very, uh, it's not very chemically or anything. It actually smells really nice. And just use a fresh Q-tip, get it soaked in that, and work your way through this adhesive. You can see, you can see some of the adhesive right here. So get it nice and oily with that Goo Gone. Make sure you're not using Goof Off, you want to be using Goo Gone. Goof Off is very different. I made the mistake of using Goof Off one time on a Game Boy Color Shell, and it eats up the ABS plastic and it just completely melts it. So but You can see it just cleans the adhesive right off. It takes a little bit of scrubbing, but not too bad. Just keep working it, and it'll come right off. So there's some pieces of it. Because Goo Gone is an oil, we're going to have to clean it up as well with some more alcohol. But that's not a big deal. And it looks like... I'm going to switch to this side now. I think there's a little bit more right here. So now back to the alcohol. And you can see it kind of separating the oil there in the middle. This is going to take a few passes of cleaning it with the alcohol, but... something like a nice clean rag to gently wipe it and then clean it again but we're almost there you start to hear that like squeaky sound that's when you know it's pretty clean Okay, that's pretty good. Um, so I'm going to start by cleaning it one more time with this. This is like a bamboo cloth, I guess. Just to get any last residue that's there. And if you want, you can go ahead and lay this on something softer like this. And then you want to use like a, a nice microfiber cloth. Again, be really careful with that ribbon. And it does kind of help sometimes to clean the front as well because it's kind of hard to tell if some of the fingerprints are on the front or back. So you can see there's quite a lot still on the front here. And fingerprints are have some oil too, so using alcohol helps with those. Okay, so the screen is pretty much done. We just have to reattach it together. And you want to really make sure that the inside is nice and clean before we close it all up. Because it's a lot harder to access when it's closed up, of course. And when you have full access to it like this, it's just really easy to clean. But that looks pretty crystal clear now. Okay, so I'm going to lay it back on this cloth. And I'm going to be using some solder wick desoldering braid to clean up the chip quick that's on here. You can see it left quite a bit here. And it's actually probably better to do this on this surface. So I'm just going to lay this here. Soak it right up. 
looks pretty good. And now the top ones are a little bit more delicate, but just lay it down and I think that's pretty good for now. So, kind of attached the two together when doing that. So just, uh, surface again right here. And I'm just going to clean up the, the ribbon a little bit more. I'm going to add a little bit of just normal, normal flux to the bottom ribbon. Just gently melt that in a little bit. And there's still a lot of leftover solder probably more than enough than you need. And when you lay this down, you want to really just line up these two holes. And it's pretty straightforward to line up. And once you get it lined up, you know, just tack down one end of it. You use something like a metal sponger like this to very gently at the top of the pins hold them all together. And just pull down on all of the pins like this. And that should be good. We're going to clean it one more time. And again, I have to remind you, be careful of the ribbon. These are so extremely fragile. So the screen is now done. I'm going to set this aside. So for the motherboard here, um, basically you just want to be on the back side here. And in this area here, we're going to be installing a bivert. A bivert isn't all that important on a pocket. Um, it does add a bit more con contrast than just by default, but it's not as drastic of a change as a DMG. I still think that they are valuable to install, but it's up to you. They are very complicated because you can either use one of these really tiny ones, which are involve some really, really fine soldering, or you can use a larger one where you have to run lots of wires all over and those can get kind of messy. Um, there are a couple other small ones like this. This one was from J. Rodrigo Tech. Um, I think Retro Modding has one now. Uh, a few other people, I think Handheld Legend has one. Um, but basically there's these, there's a little gap here right above the CPU. Um, there's a little arrow and like a little wide space. The two traces on either side of that you want to cut. So can you get really close here? So it's this arrow right here. You see this little tiny down arrow. There's a little space here where that space is. This trace and this trace. You just want to cut them so they don't make contact across anymore. So we just take your X-Acto knife and find that trace and carefully cut through it. Just like that. And you probably want to cut through it a couple times. Just really make sure it's nice and deep. And then maybe flip it around to cut the other trace. So the other trace is right here. Okay. And it's really easy to just, uh, test for continuity um, from, you just follow these two traces. One goes here and the other goes here. And then they're just right across from each other, basically. You just follow them and, you know, set your voltmeter to continuity mode and check across, just like that. Oops. Okay, so now um, there are the pins. Basically what we're doing is instead of letting these two traces just cross. We're gonna make each of those two traces on the top go into these two, and then it goes into the little hex inverter, 
and then it goes out to these two. Or actually it's going from the CPU here this way uh, through the hex converter and then out this way to the uh, LCD. And then I'm not exactly sure how this works, but there's two more pads here that need to be connected to this capacitor on either side, C12. So you can see if you fit this in right here, uh, the little capacitor kind of just touches those two sides. And if you line it up just right, um, these two bits on the Bivert chip line up with the two pins that we cut on the bottom, and then the two on the top. Like everything lines up just perfectly. You kind of have to like adjust it a little bit, but just do your best there. Um, I typically like to kind of tin this a little bit first, so uh, get a little bit of flux and add it to the pads. Okay, get a little bit of solder. And just tin those two pads. And this one looks like it's already pre-tinned on the two, the top and bottom and little little bits there. So it's really hard to do on camera because it's so tiny. I usually get like my head like really close in there so I can see what I'm doing. But basically I'm going to start with the I'm going to start with a capacitor here. Okay, so there's one side of it. And maybe I'll just leave one side connected for right now while I line up the other, while I line up the pins. The top two look like they are lining up perfectly. And the bottom two are pretty close, so about like that. Looks really good. And what you're supposed to be able to do is just apply some heat to the top here like this, but I never really found that to work very well. Um, it does work pretty well if you kind of apply heat to the edges like this. like that. And then again on the top and bottom. And then on the top. But just take your time, look at it really closely and keep going in there and making sure that each little pad is connected to the pin properly. Um, these are a lot harder, the bottom ones are a lot harder to tell if they're actually connected or not. Um, so you definitely want to either use a voltmeter or just plug it in and test it and see how it's going. Um, and then again, here, you want the solder to connect to the side of the capacitor. So, if you're having trouble getting it to flow all the way down to the capacitor, um, just add a little bit of solder to your soldering iron. And you want, basically want to heat up the capacitor first because solder flows to the heat. So, okay, I think that, look, I think that worked already. Uh, there's not very much solder there though, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. closer so you can see right there you can see both are connected both sides of 
of this part here and here are connected to the capacitor. Um, this one's a little bit more difficult to see. Um, these two pads are connected to those two connections there. And then these, I think they're connected. I need to double check. Okay, so let's test it with our screen. Okay, it's not backlit yet, so I'm just going to put the, uh, the backlight and the polarizer in here so we can see something that's happening. And let's plug this in. And okay, there we go. Looks really good. It's inverted now. So now what we need to do actually is take this polarizing film and rotate it this way. So now it is biverted. And that makes it harder to see, but once we get the backlight in there, the backlight running, um, it'll look really nice. So for the backlight, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out right now because we have to remove the, there's like a plastic film on both. Um, so these handheld legend ones are really nice because they have the resistors already soldered in. So just add a little bit of flux to the pads. And we're going to tin these. that it came with, which are a little long, but they'll do. So red is positive, doesn't really matter, just, but it's nice, it's nice to use kind of, always make red positive so you know which one's positive just by, just to make it a little bit easier. And blue or black or whatever else you have is negative. They're sticking out a little bit, so I'm just going to add a little pressure to there we go. That looks good. So the backlight has some film to remove. Okay, I guess we don't need it plugged in right now. And we're going to just slide this underneath one more time. Okay, so basically the positive wire is going to go all the way over to this one here labeled VDD. And the negative is going to go to ground, which is right over here. So I think I am going to shorten these wires. Um, and maybe even change the positioning a little bit. Have the negative go this way. The positive. They're still on the same pads, I'm just kind of turning them so they kind of come off the pads in a different angle. So, about like that. And you can see that positive is going to go around here and be about right here. So, I'm going to go ahead and trim that right here. And then the negative is going to be quite a bit shorter. It's going to just bend and end up really close right here. So I'll make it nice and short, maybe just give it a tiny bit extra. Okay, so now we need to strip these. Once they are stripped and ready to go, 
we can tin these. We don't want anything shorting, so I'm just going to add a little bit of Kapton tape. Okay, and then wrap it over. And I think one should be good. Okay, just like that. Bring back our motherboard. And we're going to finally install the backlight. Get that nice and lined up. Take your positive wire, and it's still a little long, but just kind of bend it into place. And it's going to go right here. Okay, just like that. There's the positive. And the negative goes right here. And we probably need to kind of bend this into shape a little bit, kind of bend these wires. Oh, it's already on. And it looks really good. So yeah, now I'm going to go ahead and peel off this film. There should be two layers to it. So there's the front layer. And again, you don't want to get fingerprints on this, so... Try to only touch the edges. This one actually has three, wow. Had a double layer in the front, that's interesting. Okay, so there we go. Uh, and you want to, you can see how it changes. When it's on the inside, it's going to be reverse of that. Um, so you want it to be this dark color, not this lighter color. You can see how so with the dark color, that's inverting at one time, and then the bivert is the second time, it's biverting. Inverting twice. So we should be pretty good to go. Uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the shell. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Test it one more time. I'm just going to put in my cart here. And there we go. Looks really good. Now all that's left is installing the screws and closing it all back up. And that's all there is to this one. Um, so a lot of people run into issues with pockets because the the regulator, uh, that's this board here, the voltage regulator, this provides five volts to um, a lot of different places on the board. Um, it's not powerful enough to power the system as well as the backlight, the LEDs in the backlight. What's advised is to install something like one of these. This is a little uh, 5 volt regulator. This one I got from Polulu, Pololu. The 5 volt step up voltage regulator. Um, this is basically another one of these. It's a lot smaller but it does the same thing and basically it takes the power from the batteries and some of that's going to go down to this one and then we can also route some of that power to this one. Um, so that way we, this one would power only the backlight and this one will power the system so uh, it just takes a lot of the load off of this and um, for some pockets in some in some games when there's like a lot going on you might notice uh, kind of weird like glitches on the screen and stuff 
and that's probably because you didn't install like the um, the regulators being overloaded. So um, SJM4306 actually made a really good video um, about installing one of these, so I'll link to that in the description. And I may show how to install it and install one of these in another video of my own, but for now, um, uh, go ahead and check out his video. And um, yeah, I guess I'll uh, see you guys next time.